I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. Right now, we're up to the 11th episode of this show. When I first started out with this project, I mean, er, basically, it's changed my entire summer, and in a good way. I was all excited about this summer. My wife and I moved into a new place downtown. But then at the beginning of spring, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Now, if you've been following this show, you know that I've mentioned this before and that I've talked about the struggles that we've gone through. I've written about it on my daily journal that I post on the site. But I had this idea for this show and I wanted to do something. And I wanted it to be something both my wife and I could enjoy. And one of those things was being involved in the community, the art community, getting back into it, being downtown, being around people that do it. Basically, our first thought was we would just go to more things. But how do you meet people doing that? You want to know how? You start a podcast and ask them to talk to you. And I think it really helped us through a very difficult summer. So during the time of recording all these, we met people, we experienced things. As I pieced them together and edited these shows, things still continued to happen. I mean, I've met painters, sculptors, writers, photographers, jewelry makers. So I'm just saying that I'm really happy I did this. I've learned about things that are happening around town, things that need to happen. I also learned that I hate blogging, but I like drawing really quick cartoons about what I do during the day. So I stopped blogging because I can't write and made comics. So I just wanted to thank everybody who's still listening to this show, or if you're just discovering for the first time and like what you hear, thank you very much. Now, today's guest, when I saw her art, I really liked it. There was something different about it. She goes back and forth from Chicago, where she's from, but lives in Madison. And in Chicago, she has more success putting up her stuff. She says that it's actually quite difficult to find places to put it up in Madison and about how she actually found her voice a few years ago with one of my favorite answers, I think. And the answer is Grace Jones. So have a listen as I meet Sharon Bird. You live in Madison right now, or are you from somewhere else? I'm from Chicago, but I've been in Madison for over 20 years. 20 years? Mm Mm-hmm. What brought you here? Uh, my family moved to Chicago, or moved from Chicago, sorry, to That's Madison. I followed them, and then I ended up going to school there and started a family, and I just ended up being in Madison. When did you start getting into art? When did you start actually creating? Well, I guess I've always been into art since high school, and I used to draw. That was my medium for a long time. I went to UW for social work, but in 2009, I think, I decided that I wanted to do art professionally. And at the time, when I was in high school, it was called commercial art, Hmm. and now it's called graphic design. You're right. I forgot all about that. Yeah, I'm I'm dating myself by saying this. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I went into it thinking I was going to be doing a lot of art. I had no concept or idea about creative suites or, you know, I didn't know I was going to be doing anything on a computer. So I kind of went into it blindly and went through the graphic design program. But during the program, we did get to do some art, which was painting. And it was the first time that I had painted. At that time, the subject matter was kind of boring to me. So... Mm -hmm. I didn't really stick with the painting. I continued with the graphic design. So I, you know, once I learned the program, I really liked it. I like doing layout the work and things like that. So a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with lupus, which is an autoimmune disease. And it, for me, it affects my joint. And I had to like slow down and a, a lot in my life. And in doing that slowing down, you know, I needed something. So I I like painting, so I'm like, let me try this. But now I'm going to do the subject matter that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, no more landscapes and still lives. You know, I'm going to paint what I want to paint. And I found that I was kind of good at it, and I really enjoyed it. And at the same time, people 
I got a lot of positive response, people wanting to buy my work and to have the opportunity to show it and sell it. It's like a really organic thing that happened after a long time of me doing other things. In high school, I actually was doing a book report on a poet named Flannery O'Connor, and that was the first time I heard about lupus. That's what she, mm -hmm. she had had. Maybe it was because you were talking about the time period of starting out in high school, like all of that flooded back into my head right when you said yeah. it. What programs were you were you using when you went to school for it at first? For graphic design? Yeah. That's where I learned like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, like Creative Suite, Dreamweaver. I do a little bit of web design as well. Okay. I don't use those in my artwork yet, but at some right. point I'm thinking of ways that I want to incorporate it. And it's shows in my artwork in one way in that I think it's kind of graphic. I like to use strong colors. My hope is that it kind of jumps out at you. When you were taking the classes and you said they actually had you do painting, I found that kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. What was the reasoning behind them actually? I mean, they're teaching you how to do graphic arts, but then right. all of a sudden they were but, like, and today we're going to paint. Like, like, how did that come up? Well, I guess the fundamentals can be done through paint. Um, I think the first painting class I had was color theory. That particular teacher didn't do any kind of computer graphics. Huh. See, I think that's important. Um, yeah, now it is. But, you know, he was an older teacher, old school, and he was a painter. And so to teach us color theory, we used paint. He was a great teacher, though. He I clearly think. influenced you because that's that's when yeah. you decided, I like this. Mm -hmm. What made you choose the medium that you use? Are you using oils, acrylics? I use acrylics just because they're so versatile. You can water them down and get like a watercolor feel, or you can make it thicker and get kind of a texture. Mm -hmm. I haven't used oil paint just because of the smell, and I don't uh -huh. really have a ventilated area to work in, but I would like to try it. Um, I see other artists use it, and they're blending. It seems like it's a little easier to do in oil. What would you say your style is, the paintings that you make? You know, I'm still kind of trying to discover what my style is. I'm not going for a realistic rendering. Mm. Um, I guess kind of illustration, maybe. What was the first one you ever did where you were like, I want to put these up somewhere? The first painting, I was like kind of going crazy because I was sick and in the house for like a month and like I need to do something with myself. And at the time, I was reading the Grace Jones biography, which is called I'll Never Write My Memoirs, I think. And it was a memoir. <laughs> it yeah. was pretty good. But Grace Jones was like my idol back in the day. Um, I went to prom and dressed like she dressed. And there was a picture of her. There was a cover picture and there was a back picture. And I was like, I want to paint that. So I painted it on just some cardboard throwaway. And I was like, really good. <laughs> like, oh, wow, this came out way better than I expected it to. So that, those were my first two pieces that I did, something I chose to paint. Hmm. And that was actually my first time painting a face. I think I had painted people before, but as a part of a scene, so there was, wasn't a lot of detail. And this was like a face portrait. So that would have been my first painting on this journey. I like the inspiration behind that. And, and it yeah. kind of gave you a realization. The subject matter I want to work with. And now I have like a wall. <laughs> I'm overflowing with painting. <laughs> I know. You kind of got into this about two years ago, and you've recently had shows and gallery showings. And what made you finally take the plunge to go, this is what I want to do. I'm going to try this. Well, my boyfriend is a musician. He lives in Chicago. I guess I would say would be my biggest driving force in pushing it out there. He is pretty cultured. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, he goes to a lot of art events and kind of in the art scene in Chicago. So, you know, he's like, your stuff is as good as anything I see. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when he would hear about something, he would push me to do it. And for a while, I thought, I'm too new at this. I'm not ready. But then I was like, well, I can just try and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And 
it worked a few times. So. The one that you just had, 100 canvases. It was a fundraiser and silent auction at the Silver Room in Chicago. How did you get into that? Um, I actually did that last year as well. And that was the first painting that I ever sold, although it was for charity. I didn't get the money myself, mm -hmm. but they do this every year. It's a block party that's held in the High Park neighborhood in Chicago. They have an event called the Black Party. And as part of the Black Party, they have this 100 canvas event to raise funds because the Black Party is free. So artists from all around donate their artwork and they do an art show and people come in and they bid on the art mm -hmm. and the money goes towards putting on this block party. I just, one of the things I applied for. And that was it. You just said, I'd like to be part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I have been to the block party in the past, so I knew about it. Yeah. And, you know, I like the event. I'm, I'm all about the movement, what they're doing. So. I said, why not? And it's just that it's as simple as that. From the people that I've been talking to recently, it's a lot easier to get your stuff out there than you think it is. Most of the stories started with, and then I just asked them, and they said, sure. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you think and it's, it's going to be so much so harder. Hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I find in Madison that is a little harder, but I think if my subject matter doesn't fit everywhere, you know, I can't go in a traditional coffee shop, maybe. So I got to kind of pick and choose. I've applied for something for the library, but, you know, it wasn't really the right, I guess, for that. Well, you maybe know, not all of them. You get turned down. Right, exactly. Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no. I feel like you should almost split your works into, like they do in the internet, safe for work, not safe for work. Yeah, that's true. Because I look at all <laughs> of them, and personally, I think they're all great. I mean, I get probably what people are going like, well, sure, we can't have the woman flipping you off in the library. How do you find the inspiration for what you make? I guess it's basically living in Madison. I feel like they lump, or I say they, the culture in Madison is to lump Black people all together as one. And that is so not true. There's so many different types and people who are into different things. And I just want to show different depictions of Black people living different lives and beautiful in everything, you know, in any type of incarnation, there's beauty in it. And I just try to capture that. That's exactly what it is. I mean, creating a picture is sitting down and trying to capture a moment. There's um, a couple of people who are like Instagram famous, you know, that I've painted that I use as a muse. I'll put in hmm. a reggae artist I love but just in a normal setting, for instance, most of the time I'll just take a picture that I really, really like and put my spin on it. How do you promote yourself and get the word out there? My Instagram is the place that I generally send people. I'm in the process of putting together my website. And I think word of mouth, um, I'm in a few groups with artists and art buyers. I guess I'm not like aggressively doing any kind of promotions right now. I'm just kind of growing a small organic following. Mm -hmm. And I think once I get my website up, I'll probably try to do more promotions, um, more. I'm going to do more art shows. I'm actually looking around Madison for something that would be a good fit for me. Where are some of the places that you've, so, you've looked? I, it's kind of hard for me to find things in Madison. I, don't, I guess I don't know, really know where to look. Whereas in Chicago, I have somebody who kind of at least knows where to look or who mm. to talk to. I haven't found that in Madison yet. Mm. I'm always kind of insecure with my art still. I'm not fully into my, you know, I'm an artist yet. And that's so. probably why it's really good that your boyfriend and whoever your connection is in Chicago, that's why they're clearly helping you make those connections. And you're just saying you haven't found those in Madison yet. You need those people to really help you or actually make you do it. It sounds like they go, come on. <laughs> well, I think that as I get more confident in my work and I can see a huge difference from two years ago when I started and now. And so I feel like two years from now, I'm going to be even that much better. So I, at some point, I think my confidence level will catch up. It's because it's personal stuff. You're you're doing personal exactly. work, and then you're trying right. to get people to 
accept them and put them up for you. And and I get that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In my other life, I worked for the y, YWCA and I had to do a lot of marketing work for them. I worked as a public awareness campaign coordinator for the Wisconsin Coalition Against Domestic Violence. I had to go around the state and help people promote things. So promotion comes easily to me. It's the confidence piece. Once I get that up, I think the promoting will be easy. I'm not really worried about that. I just want to develop my art a little bit more. It's different when the promotion that you're writing is about you. It's tough because right, exactly. <laughs> if it's for exactly. something else, you can write something where it's like, this is brilliant. Everybody's going to understand what I'm talking about. And then you write right. about yourself and mm-hmm. it's like, how do I say that? Yeah, you're exactly right. Do you have your own home studio or do you have a studio that you go to? Where do you work? I have a little corner oh. <laughs> in, the, in the living room. <laughs> I like that. It almost seems like yeah. punishment going that I like it there. though. No, yeah. that's nice. <laughs> Oh. Beautiful things come out of that corner. So <laughs> it's magic. Oh, that's poetic. We're making it sound like this horrible little place where they're like, you can work in this area. That's it. And you're like, that's where the beautiful things come from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> would you like to do this as a full time career? Oh, split? I would love to you do would. it as a full time career and also to curate some art. I would. Here's um, the Harlem Renaissance Museum that opened. And I kind of like what they're doing, but I I would like to curate some art that comes from like little known artists, you know, people Mm -hmm. like me who are just starting out and some black art in Madison. But there was an exhibit last weekend. It opened the Faces of Incarceration. Yes. With uh, Uh, Philip Salamone. He was one of the people that I spoke to that was involved in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. My art is like the antithesis of that. Like, we're not all incarcerated. You know, we can be beautiful without being criminals Mm -hmm. or, you know, having a bad background. We're just everyday people living our lives. So, yeah, I would like to see more of this kind of art instead Mm -hmm. of it being, you know, photography of poverty or Mm -hmm. faces of incarceration or just, I don't see this a lot in in what I'm doing. What kind of changes have you had to make to really decide to take this step in the past couple of years? For me, painting is kind of a meditation. The time that I'm spending painting, I'm not concentrating on aches and pains or, you know, anything that's going on in my life. All I'm seeing is the painting. How is it going to turn out? Where is this going? What do I need to do to get it? As far as changing anything, no, but I have enjoyed the what is brought to me as far as the calmness. Maybe it's changed me. I haven't changed anything. Do you have kids? I do. I have a 24-year-old daughter and I have a 14-year-old son. What do they think of you making the leap into art? My son has no opinion about anything. <laughs> that makes he's 14 sense. 14 and I he know. just doesn't care. Um, but my daughter thinks it's great. <laughs> I just realized as I asked that, I'm like, that's a silly question. You have a teenager and a fully grown person. The teenager is going to be like, does it involve me? No. And I don't right, care. Exactly. <laughs> oh, funny. I have a online boutique that I run as well that sells Afrocentric clothing, jewelry, things for the home. I do a little freelance graphic design. And I also... I help people with dreadlocks to grow or start their dreads or twist them, maintain them. How do you do that? Um, There's a technique to twist them. And then when you start, you have to twist them constantly, like daily. The person who has them, but they might want to once a week or so get them tightened up. And then once they lock or they start to kind of mat together, Hmm. then you can do it a little less often until they're totally locked. And then it's just a matter of maintenance. I guess I've never thought about that before, but it's like, yeah, they don't just happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people think that it's a low maintenance style. It's a high maintenance style. You got to do a lot. (laughs) I mean, unless you just want them, you know, matted, messy, ugly ones. Most, you know, that's a style now. Most people are 
getting them done professionally. And then the store you were talking about before, that's the ethniqueworldwide.com mm -hmm. site? Okay. I thought about this after Sharon mentioned it, but I didn't have any suggestions as to where she should try and get a showing, try to set up her art, see where they would let her put it. Personally, I think her stuff is very powerful. Some of it is quite raw. A lot of it is celebratory. And I think personally the hardest part is some of it's a little sexual in kind of an empowerment way. I don't know. I look at it and I think that girl's badass that kind of sexuality. I just really enjoyed what she was doing and I love the fact that she's just feeling it out right now. But in the process, putting her stuff out there at shows and galleries, like she had mentioned, she did the 100 Canvases event in Chicago. So kudos to her for doing that. I know I would have been terrified. I wanna thank Sharon for taking the time to talk to me. And if you're hearing this show for the first time, you can subscribe by visiting our website at AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe. You can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube, or sign up for our email. And while you're there, you can read my daily comic journal called Then This Happened. The music for the show is by my side project called Romcom. That's com with two M's. And you can learn more about that at AmericanBandito.com slash music. And I'll see you next time. So long. Thank you.